So the story of our horn quartets was that when we're on tour, we don't like to practice very much. And Klaus and I have been playing Klaus, that's him. We've been playing duets together for many, many years so that we never have to practice. And we thought, it would be, you know, we're getting a bit bored with each other now, I guess. So we thought we'd invite a couple more colleagues to play with us. So we've been playing quartets on our tours. And because we, we, we'd played all the normal quartet rep uh, repertoire, we thought we'd ask Klaus to write some great pieces, which he's done. I can't say it better. <laughs> Which he's done. And, um, and so we got together on tour, played these quartets, and had the great idea of recording a CD. Go! <laughs> Fergus, you had to chase up somebody from Scotland. That's right, but uh, that was probably the, the most genius moment of all because this uh, composer came up with the name this piece, the very title, uh, which we took for the CD itself, Four Corners. Uh, it was meant to be the Four Corners of Great Britain, but uh, we've uh, applied it to the whole CD, the Four Corners of the World. And so, uh, as you'll discover, we go all over the place, uh, from north to south and east to west. <laughs> Klaus, what's your favorite piece on the CD? My favorite piece on the CD is Sous le ciel de Paris because it reminds me of my happy times in the French capital of Paris. Would you like to tell us more about your happy memories in Paris? No. Oh, okay. Well, that was a silly question. Klaus, <laughs> well, you tell me later. <laughs> So we don't only have to practice the horns for the CD, we also have to practice the photo. We put so many suitcases and horns up on my poor little mini that we were worried it was all going to fall down. So it's, it's only about 40 degrees out here in the shade and everyone's sweating. And on Wednesday when we do the photo, it's going to be even worse because we're going to be wearing our concert clothes. So I'm interested to see what the photo will look like. Hopefully it's going to be really great. It's got to be at least as great as the CD. And um, what a backdrop. So Fergus, they say sex sells, but do you think horns and minis sell as well? Not nearly, but pretty good. Pretty good second choice. Used to, my very first car was a Mini Cooper. And do you want to tell the audience what happened in your very first Mini? Is this uh, free for children? Absolutely not. No, then I won't tell you anything about what happened <laughs> in that car. 
But for me, it's a lovely return to my youth when I played horns and blew them all over the place and, and uh, roared around town in, in a mini and did all sorts of naughty things in a mini. How many, how many horns do you think you can get in a mini? Um, let's see, two in the front, two in the back. Well, that's the elephants. <laughs> So Stefan, we've yes. packed the car. Where should we set off on tour? Antarctic. I oh. want to have something cool. I need something it's cold. about 35 degrees out here ah. in the shade. What was the biggest challenge in this recording, Fergus? Keep, keep keeping up and coping with you three. These guys are laughing all the time. Time. You wouldn't have believe you ever it tried, to look at Klaus's Have you ever face? tried to make a proper horn ansatz while you're laughing and smiling? Klaus, what was the most challenging? To find out whether it sounds uh, like I thought it might sound when I wrote it down. And that was a, a great experience. And I tried to play all the difficult stuff. No, I tried to compose or arrange the difficult stuff for the others. And, uh, <laughs> didn't did work, did it? For myself, but it didn't work. Uh, I just have to time. tell you guys that we would often play a piece through, and Klaus would stop and he'd say, "Oh no, I wrote that, and I can't play it." <laughs> but I think you hear that he can. We horn players like to hang out together and this is just what we're doing now. We are hanging out in the back of my mini. Um, yeah, it's quite... We do, we do this all the time. Quite comfortable back here. Hey, like, whoa. Where's Stefan? I mean, um, this is not, we can get all four people in this mini, but there's only three of us here. Where's Stefan? <laughs> Stefan is taking the dog Lucky to a to place where he, yes. <laughs> So when you buy the CD, which of course you're going to do and you're not only going to buy it for yourself, you're going to buy it for all your friends for Christmas and for Easter and for birthdays and everything the possible, you will hear that there are many special effects on this CD that is not just about horn playing, but uh, we've tried to put lots of interesting noises into the CD as well. In Klaus's piece, The Chinese Kitchen Dreams, um, Klaus composed for gongs and claves, which aren't actually very Chinese, but they sound it. Yeah, we don't know. Maybe the Chinese friends will tell us it sounds Chinese, and if not, it's just the wrong association. But we thought a gong is always something like Chinese. We didn't use kitchen pans because it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a kitchen dream. But we thought of number 326, which is actually... On the menu. A, on the menu, which is the one ton Isn't that the Peking duck? A, no. No, that was 411. It's like the Monty Python. <laughs> I like Chinese. They all mentioned the numbers of uh, food, of menus. No, of... Yeah, of the, of the, of the rest of the... The items. Yeah, the items. Number. So our number, was, our item was number 300 and something. You see what I mean? Yeah. We have a couple of special effects, not that many, do we? Well, we don't seem to be able to uh, just live with music alone. We, we keep wanting to soup it up and, and do more than, than you know, than just want on soup it up. You see, <laughs> there we go. I rest my case.
What special effects did you did you think were particularly successful on the CD? Well, there was somebody going a whoop at one point. <laughs> oh, I wonder who and that it, could have been. Oh, I don't know where it would be then. She says, oh, <laughs> we lassie here. That's right. Oh, it was, you know, maybe a bit of dancing. Bit of dancing. We had to, when we were recording The Lion Sleeps Tonight, we were a whim awaying away. And um, our, our recording engineer, Christoph, he, he, he cut the, the recording. He said, you know, guys, it's sounding a little bit stiff. He said, I want you to dance. So we, we got in there. We moved away, as you probably saw in the video. Rather embarrassing for us all, because, as you know, musicians are terrible dancers, except for Klaus. That's an old Philharmonic song, Keep the Women Away. And it was a whim away from them. <laughs> they don't sing it anymore. Do you see what I mean? <sighs> 